Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience, presented by DraftKings. Today, Cuss Corner 36C. If you missed A and B, you can go check those out on the feed right now. Reminder to smash the like button to the episode and subscribe to the Cuss Corner only feeds. You can find those down in the description right now. Leave a rating and review and help us out over there too. So prepare yourself for Cuss Corner. Cuss Corner, it's Cuss Corner. Cuss Corner, it's Cuss Corner. He's got the hottest takes with the highest stakes. He should be president of the United States, but it's Cuss Corner, it's Cuss Corner. Cuss Corner. <laughs> I want to talk about umbrellas. Oh, God. And how angry I am at umbrellas. I don't understand. How to open why. them. I'm sorry you don't have your motor skills. Uh, in this day and age, how umbrellas don't withstand any amount of wind and rain in this world makes no sense to me. So on Saturday night, I went out to a concert and I had to walk a distance in the rain and I brought my umbrella with me. An umbrella I had purchased actually at, at a store I really like. So I, I don't want to criticize the store. Why not? They sold but, you a faulty product. No, no. But I open up the umbrella and I'm walking and the wind is severe. I hold the umbrella into the wind. Arms of it start to snap. I get completely drenched. I end up throwing the umbrella in a garbage can on my way to the event where there were three other umbrellas in the garbage can. And it, it occurred to me as I was throwing it in there, it's like, what is wrong with umbrellas? Why uh, is there so, this, this bait and switch going on of good umbrellas being sold and nothing nothing lasts? They so, don't make umbrellas last anymore. That That is not true. So here's the thing. And I've, I sustain this as well. And listen, I don't know how windy it was, but I was away for the weekend up in we Toronto with Jeff. And Jeff can attest that on Saturday, it was like 50 mile per hour winds in the city. It was crazy. crazy yeah. Uh, so I don't know how many umbrellas are going to hold up to that style of wind. That's not really what they're not. They're not made for wind. They're made for rain. But I do get your point because I've had crappy umbrellas turn inside out on me and you know, what are you going to do? They're, they're broke, they're useless at that point, you throw them in the garbage. But I have found and this was an investment I made about three years ago that I actually paid up. I paid up for an umbrella, Tim. I never had those problems again. How much did you pay for this umbrella? Uh, because of the design on it from the, uh, from, from the department store. I, I spent a good amount of money. How much did you pay for the umbrella? Like, oh, oh, over under a hundred bucks for the umbrella. I think it was like a hundred bucks. Okay. So that, that should be a better quality umbrella. You, sir, probably shouldn't go back. Well, what's the name of the store that sold you no, this I'm not cheap umbrella? No, I'm not going to talk about it. But just the fact is, is it, the umbrellas these days just don't seem by and large to last. That the same weekend I sent my folks, because it was their uh, 40th anniversary, I sent them to a hotel for the night. And they were didn't have umbrellas. They were out going out for, to get something. And so, of course, hotels provide you with umbrellas. This is a nice hotel. And they were telling me the exact same thing happened to them, that the wind snapped the arm of their umbrella, too. And I was like, see, umbrellas just don't work anymore. Well, uh, well, how, 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 how hard, like how windy was it? Like, was it very well, and raining torrentially? You could have called it a hurricane. But it, well, it if it's a hurricane, Tim, the, the, the umbrella's not going to work in that circumstance. I need to be kept dry. I don't like getting wet. And umbrellas should be there to protect me. Well, maybe you should and wear a just, fucking I, rain jacket then. I wore a rain jacket and I got soaked through it because well, the rain. Well, maybe you need to buy a better rain jacket. Well, maybe I, think, I do then. I mean, truth of the matter is, Tim, the umbrellas, yeah, it's not really meant like you would be complaining if you're in like a true windstorm and your umbrella's not holding up. Like it's yeah. just meant, you know, that's all. So, what am I supposed to you. walk around with then when it's incredibly rainy and incredibly windy? Nothing. The umbrella is just there for when things are mild, when it's a light shower, and when it's really rainy, you just have to grin and bear it. No, umbrella is there if to it's protect really me. windy. Yeah, yeah when it's really windy. Much. Yeah, I guarantee you that in like Scotland and England, they have the best umbrellas because it's do, always do, windy. Do, do, do you do you only say that because you watch Mary Poppins? <laughs> no, I know, but I bet you, for example, the bumper shoots that come in Rolls Royces. I bet you they're like of top quality and they don't break in the wind. Like, the, like the, all the ones around the city here did. Yeah, okay. So, so, like so how, how much, yeah, how much do you think that those cost to buy Tim? 
Well, you can't buy them. You have to get them. As All right. A, well, let's, let's, a, let's say an equivalent made umbrella that would come in a Rolls Royce. How much do you think one of those umbrellas would cost? Two thousand bucks. Probably like. Yeah, I was going to say two, three thousand bucks. All right, then go spend two, three thousand dollars on an umbrella. You won't have this problem. No, but I don't want to do that. Well, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I Tim. Like, I don't see why you should have to spend that kind of money on an on, a, on an essential necessity. Umbrellas should not be snapping like this all the time in the wind. And it was very annoying. It was very annoying to me. And, it, and the fact that it happened to my parents, too, with good umbrellas the same day, just confirmed what I needed to know. And I, as I mentioned to Paul on Sunday, that my folks went out for the hotel and there was an all-you-could-eat breakfast buffet. And they came home with two muffins, three oranges, and uh, two bottles of orange juice from this all-you-can-eat buffet. So uh, I just want to get people. This is what people do. Uh, no. so, so, so this behavior we now are stealing fruit. Yeah, it's, it's learned behavior on your part. So maybe we shouldn't be so hard on you about it. Maybe we should phone up Doug and just yell at him. <laughs> like, what are you doing? The other thing I'm really angry about, and I'm really angry about Good, this. Like, talk, talk about you know, oh well, people, don't have, you don't have real problems, but this is a problem to me. I don't understand why Wendy's has to make all these different flavored Frosties now. For the longest time, the only Frosty was chocolate. And that was the way it was forever. And when they came up with that vanilla one a few years ago, I warned everybody who'd listen to me. As another example of me being John the Baptist. <laughs> I was the only person out there screaming about how once you allow some other flavor in, next thing you know, every single fancy flavor of Frosty on earth is going to exist. And so then strawberry came in for a bit. The other day, I'm going to Wendy's to, to try out that new uh, pub uh, burger with the world's worst bun, a.k.a. a pretzel bun. And I see that the caramel, there's a caramel latte uh, frosty now. And I was so, I was just enraged. Did, did like, they, hold, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did they make you eat it? No, but I had to see the big advertisement in front of the store as I drove by. And I was like, here we go. The Frosty, the original chocolate Frosty, is one of the great desserts. Did the they discontinue desserts. the chocolate? No. no but the fact Are that you more insane? Absolutely. It's you making, literally it, just said you got enraged. Enraged. Like, they went to vanilla, Period. you got enraged. They went to strawberry, you got angrier. Now they've got the caramel latte, you're enraged. Because I knew it was going to happen, that they were going to just water down and they're trying to encourage people not to get the real good frosties but to get these fancy highfalutin millennial frosties because oh well if we can't have all these fancy flavors you've never heard of we're not going to have it like it's it it really makes me upset it Can just I give another you the example number one wendy's pro tip go ahead Don't by the way I, that is a nice pretzel bun that they have there well um, but yes a nice pretzel bun is a is, a, is an oxymoron <laughs> the wendy's pro is tip is uh and I believe we've said it before, Tim, but the the liquid cheese that they'll put on a baked potato, you get a little side cup of that for a quarter and you dip your fries in that. that so that, I think that's a very good idea. I, I, I endorse that idea. I don't know if we talked about it, but I definitely endorse that idea. But yeah, the multi-flavored Frosties, just it makes me so angry. There's only supposed to be one type of Frosty, the chocolate Frosty. That's the way it always was. And there's no need. It, it worked fine. It worked fine. It was sort of quirky and neat and cool about it. That the only, it was like the Model T, the only color you could get was black. Well, the only frosty you could get was chocolate. And that was great. But no, 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 no. Some VP who had nothing better to do with his time at the Wendy's Corp had to dream up all these ways to befuddle. And, 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 and it just Wendy's. makes me so angry that they bring these new frosty flavors. You know, they're not going to stop here. You know, this is not going to be the last one. There's going to be pina colada, colada frosties, and there's going to be, uh, you know, orange flavored frosties, and there's going to be cookies and cream. It, it won't stop here. And like you can say, oh, well, the, these are only the things that people who don't have any problems worry about, but it matters to me. It really matters. Well, I, 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 I think it really matters to you because you kind of hit on it. You know, this, this isn't how it was. You know, cars, they only came in one color. Jeff, you should hear him talk about where people are allowed to sit anywhere they want on a bus. It is outrageous. Oh, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I'm talking about trying not to mess around with perfect flavor combinations. The frosty is not quite ice cream. Hold on, not though. Can, can, you, can, you, can you not get can you not get the thing you can can you not get the thing that you like anymore? I shouldn't have to ask for a chocolate frosty. I should never ever have to do that. It should just be given to me. If you just say frosty, they'll give you a chocolate one. You think that'll happen with the 17 different flavors they have on tap no, now? How, how many how many flavors flavor. do they actually have? 
I think Pat, two. They, two? they have, have two, do they? Yes, Four, just two at once. They have chocolate, and then they've been rotating in some other flavor. It's not like chocolate's never not been available. You're so weird. I guarantee you're angry. You're, you're when you angry. roll through the drive this, through this week, you get your 14th pretzel bun of this promotion. You ask for a frosty, Jeff, and then say, I'd like a medium frosty, please, and see whether they ask you uh, chocolate. Can I tell you what I did at Wendy's? Because I didn't want all this fancy um, pub cheese or whatever they're putting on that pretzel bun burger. Tim, is I just get the classic single, and I say, I'd like to upgrade that to a pretzel bun. And it's delicious. Delicious. No, you know what? I lied. Not a classic single. I got them to put a pretzel bun on a baconator. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. And because you had to ask that, did you almost have a heart attack full of rage because you had to ask? No, but Jeff's asking for Jeff's ordering off menu. You've got to ask when you're ordering off menu. <laughs> I'm asking for the, the the most. It's like going at McDonald's and ordering a Big Mac and being asked, "Oh, what type of Big Mac is that?" Like, there's only one real type. Stop, stop doing this to me. Just leave it alone. What was the last Please. time? Question for you. What was the last time you ordered a Frosty at Wendy's? Six months ago. It was a really big part of your life, is it? <laughs> it it matters to me. Okay. Maybe maybe you should invest in things that matter you get more. So you remember Pat when he got. He had to pull, pull over, over he, because he saw the hey, green he on KFC. Green yeah. <laughs> that matters to me too. I am, if I have to engage in a rear guard action to protect the fast food chains that I love for making terrible You don't mistakes, even like Wendy's. I actually do like a lot of things about Wendy's, but I also, it's a love-hate relationship. There are things about Wendy's that drives me up the wall. Like the but spicy chicken, which is amazing. Me. Well, I don't, I don't hate Wendy's for that. I just, the spicy chicken is just a terribly overrated sandwich. It's okay. It's just not great. But like there are things about Wendy's and I have memories of going to Wendy's with family members. So I mean, there's a nostalgia to Wendy's. So I have, but, but they've when been I renovated. Them, they don't look like that shanty that you were visiting in 1992. I understand that all things change, but some things change because they need to and other things decay from their change. But nothing, and, but nothing has changed. You can still order what you want to order. But I don't have to ask for it. You don't point. even know if that's true or not. You are building this. I you are building up something that doesn't so matter in your right. mind to be triggered about. I guarantee if you told the lady I want a medium frosty, she would not put. She would. I guarantee she would say, oh, which flavor? If I like, guarantee you, got, you that she would say to me or he would say to me, would you like to try the? the no, no. I bet you they wouldn't. I guarantee they wouldn't. they're at to upsell it and like get people to buy it. And what if they did? Uh, you can definitely. say no. I would like a chocolate frosty, please. I, oh my god, that was I, so I, hard. I, that was so hard. My life is tomorrow. so inconvenient. I'll, I'll, I'll Vim. I'll PayPal you. Your you don't have PayPal. Tim, Tim doesn't I'll, have PayPal. <laughs> I'll mail you. I'll mail money you a order. twenty. Put a money order in the mail. Yeah, go to Western Union. Get a money order shipped off to Tim. He can have it in four to six weeks. Anyway, you can say this is silly or whatever. But yes, it's, I, I mean silly would be underselling it. Sad would be the proper way to say it. It matters hmm. to me. There are certain staples of places that I love that I am very protective of because I can see what's going to happen before it even happens. And I knew when they brought those Pat, vanilla frosties and I knew this was going to happen. And by, next not summer, by next summer, they might even offer you a frosty and a waffle cone, those sick animals. Well, see, I don't think, I don't think they will because frosties don't quite hold up to the cone, right? Like they're not quite an ice cream. They're not quite a shake. Like they don't quite like they're 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 a uh, they're a chameleon. They're they're uh, they're sui generis, which is what I like about frosties. I like the the flavor. It's very rich and tasty. Probably better for you than most ice creams. I, no, I, really I, like I enjoy I like it when you I say like it. when you say better for you. What does that mean? Better for you than most ice creams. What does that mean? I think it probably has less sugar and fewer calories. Wendy's why, is why, my why daughter's. Do, I, I, I gotta ask. Why do you think that? I just, it's not as heavy. It's not as dense. It just, I think it's like milk. It's like a yeah. milk base. So it stands to reason that it, you know, if you were choosing an ice cream or a, a, a dairy treat option, that the frosty is probably the way to go compared to like a blizzard or a McFlurry or something. Well, those are much bigger. Well, you can get a large uh, frosty that's probably as big, if not bigger, than a blizzard, right? 
I don't. I, I would doubt it. It feels like a Blizzard's very like it's really packed in there. I feel like you get a lot of bang for your buck with a Blizzard or McFlurry. They are where, very dense. Where, where you don't, where, where you don't with a Frosty. But Tim, were you furious years ago when they really tried to sizzle up the Frosty and they would add like uh, they'd give you a side of like crushed Oreos? Yes. Or... Yes. I remember my grandmother and I complaining about this once. Like <laughs> look, like look, look so at they that. They gave you a bag of crushed Oreo on the side. And you complain that they've given you something oh, so you're telling you me that choose the, not to use. So you're telling me the Frosty that I loved for 35 years of my life was actually not good enough. That actually we need to give you something to make it better. Like it doesn't taste well. It's like when I used to go to my grandmother's for supper, if I put ketchup or mustard on her food, she'd be first. Oh, I don't make good enough food for you. You need to cover it in condiments. Like that's essentially what you're doing by putting a crushed up Oreo pieces. And who are you on offending? Your Wendy? I'm saying that they made the wrong choice. It's good as it is. It's perfect as it is. You don't you accommodate I just, all these wh- people. How does when you and your grandmother go complain together? Can you lay that out for me? <laughs> we usually don't complain together. We complain separately. <laughs> uh, I was telling the story to Pat the other day that she got very upset at the bank because like me, she wipes down the whole ATM with her Lysol wipe before she begins. But there was no room in the slot like to put the, where the receipts go to put her garbage in. So she had to carry this Lysol wipe around the, the, the mall to find a garbage can for it. And I was like, I, well, I sympathize with that. Uh, I'm not that bad. I, I, I don't want to be rude to your beautiful grandmother. I bet you she missed like four garbage cans. Maybe. Which it's is possible. fair. It's possible. Anyway, my point is, laugh all you want about this. People who are listening, who are, who are passionate, like we're passionate about the fast food industry. Uh, will probably feel the way See, I, do. I disagree. I'm passionate about the fast food industry. Oh, you can get cereal, I Tim. Love, I love their ability to just constantly. I bet you that's awesome. Swing and miss. Like that's part of it. I'll try it. Some will be a hit. A lot will be a, a miss. Um, yeah. Well, that, I, that, I think that's, that's, that's no a, problem. That's a really good point because Tim it really clamors for the day that McDonald's pizza comes back. But the reason that McDonald's pizza went away is because no one fucking liked it. No, no, people loved it. Oh yeah, it they loved they loved it so much it's been gone for thirty years. There were I te- sent Tim a documentary on it. There were technical challenges. It, it was very popular. People did adore it. But it had to do with the speed with which they could pump the pizzas out. Well, if it was so the, good, of, you think people would wait? Well, you, it's hard in a drive through right? It starts to back things up. So I, I get that in 2021, we should be able to figure that out. But uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, there are always exceptions that, that prove rules. Not, and again, not every advance is a bad thing. But when you've got a staple and a classic and things are going great, leave it alone. Uh, leave it alone. So I, I did some research while you were talking here. So a 12-ounce Oreo McFlurry from McDonald's has 200 calories, and a 12-ounce okay. Frosty from Wendy's has 350 calories. That is hard to believe. I mean, I believe you. You're quoting the numbers, but I find I, I'm, I'm surprised to now, know that. Why, why would you find by this. Why, why would Thank you, find you that, I'm shocked. Why, why would you find that hard to believe? You, the guy who said that olive oil had zero calories, you seem to have no grasp of what is in anything or how many calories there are in things. It just seems like Frosties are light. Like Jeff and I said, like they're lighter, they're more milky, less ice creamy. They don't have the 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 additional stuff that Frosties have. Uh, I, uh, I, I uh, uh, apparently, there's a lot more sugar in Frosties than there is in McFlurries. I find that surprising as well. Well, because McFlurry is literally just that that vanilla like milk ice cream that you get at McDonald's mixed with Oreo pieces. Whereas I imagine the Frosty is just. Uh, vanilla ice cream with cocoa powder, right? But I'll tell you, when I get a McFlurry, it's been a while, but I, I, I'll pay up. I'll have them uh, pump a pump a squeeze of fudge in there before they put it through the shaker. The the Smarties one is the best one there. I haven't had a Smarties McFlurry in a long time, but that used to be the goat McFlurry. Okay, good to know. All right, well, triggered by umbrellas that don't I, work in uh, hurricanes and frosties at wendy's me and tim would make a great you know people people have problems i mean december is a really hard month for a lot of people with the holidays coming if they've lost family members and there's really a lot to feel down about and tim has like sympathy pains with stuff that doesn't matter well i mean it doesn't matter to you or or anyone it would make a good like absolutely commercials yes jeff and i would make a great sonic commercial slushies and shakes 
there we go. Let's get to the late set of games. Unless you got something else that you're like weirdly mad about. No, no. Those are the things that were bothering me this week. I like, are you mad that like people are using, I don't know, uh, iPhones to listen to music and not Walkmans? Is that, is that triggering you right now? Look, the days of MP3s, I believe, was the high point of music listening. And it's all been downhill since then. I mean, that's all the same stuff. You're still downloading, sort of. well, you're still downloading MP3s onto your phone. I'm not. You know this. I listen to music through YouTube on my phone. I don't know any other way. To it. I don't use the Spotify. I don't use the iTunes or the iMusic or the Amazon Music or whatever. I go to the YouTube. I open it up. I listen to the music that way. That's how I listen to music. But and then you it, listen but, to a song and then you listen to two 15 second commercials. You can usually skip past those pretty quickly. And it's usually after the second song that you have to skip. But whatever. That's what I know. It's what I'm comfortable with. So it's like radio play. Yeah, whatever. I don't mind that. Oh, gee, I have to listen to 10 seconds of an advertisement that's curated to me. And it's probably something I want to purchase anyway. So like, what's the harm? But if you don't pay for YouTube premium, that means you have to have the YouTube app open that entire time. You couldn't do anything else in your phone or the music would stop. Yeah, that's true. But whatever, I'm listening to music. And you're really using a lot of data. I don't know how big your data plan is, but that means you're streaming a video the entire time too. Yeah, but like, I'm often on Wi-Fi, so using Wi-Fi data. You listen to music in the most suboptimal way <laughs> one could possibly do music. Well, this is what I know, and this is what I'm comfortable with. I used to have the iTunes when it was free, and like I had my my CDs and everything, I like downloaded to it. But then, like one day, it was gone, and I don't understand how to get it back. And like I had to put all my CDs into my computer and like upload the songs onto the iTunes. But like I don't have any slots on my computer for CDs anymore. So I can't do that. So like, it's like that. Anyway, things have just become more inconvenient for people. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Sp Spotify is the world's most inconvenient app where you type. I don't know it. how to you, use it. You, I don't you, understand you, it. What is it like? Just a, a lot of Anne Murray and Rita McNeil, like on your YouTube recents? No, it is. Well, I, I have listened to those people in the have past. Have you ever it. beat off to Reba? Reba McIntyre? Yeah. Oh, so you're no. say, oh, you say, it felt like you were going to say yes to that. But there was a really pronounced <laughs> no. pause there. You have any Reba beats? No. I did used to watch that show when I was younger, though. And have beats? No. Sure. What are you talking about? Tim. Tim ruined, Tim ruined some tube socks watching Reba, the show. Oh, my goodness. What about the Sunday night sex show? Oh, with Sue? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ever watch that, Tim? I don't know. I I've heard of it. I'm sure perhaps I caught an episode or two. I don't oh. have any memories. Of it. Did you used to call in to the line under fake names and be like, look, Sue? no, I was, busy I, I, was calling. I was watching Reba and I was having beats. <laughs> Is this was normal? Busy. It's normal, right? I'm Reba. I was busy calling into the local sports show every week instead. Yeah. Then we found out that guy beat up his wife or something like that last week. Your buddy. Yeah. That's, that's terrible. I, I, didn't, I didn't know the guy. I just called into the sports show. Can you imagine, Jeff, if you were hosting a sports program that had viewer Collins and Tim was the person who was always calling in? They loved having me call in. They always put my call through every week. Well, it was a local cable access sports show. You might have been the only person who ever called in. No, there was also another old man who would call <laughs> Where did in. you call to talk about? Whatever was going on in the world of sports that week. The Jets. Sometimes. Any number. They talk about the Expos or talk about the Jets or just anything. Whatever was on the go that week that I was interested in. Okay. It's like a PBS sports show. Sure. No, no, it like, was like it was like it was like you know how you have like like the Rogers station and like yeah Rogers cable access. Yeah, it was like it's a like what, access like whatever like Wayne's World was being like in the in the world of Wayne's World, whatever Wayne's World, Aurora Access Channel number six that it broadcast yeah, like the, on. It was like that, like like the shows that the Stern guys call in to crank call Jeff. Like that's essentially the network shows that I was calling. Nice. So I assume you also did Tradio then. I didn't call him to trade Dio. <laughs> did, you, did you know that he used to write the network to get transcripts of the Reba show and read it like it was like a sensual <laughs> novel? And then have a beat. Maybe two. Uh, 
Mm. You're twisted. <laughs> Something that I saw on the BBC last week, I was going to mention, but that you didn't have a chance to bring up. And there was a story coming up. People have probably read about it by now. If they haven't, I'll inform them. There was a story uh, being reported out of New Zealand that the government of New Zealand uh, is going to be prohibiting the purchase of tobacco uh, permanently for anybody 18 or younger, and then moving that prohibition age up and up and up and up uh, until cigarettes are, are not legal to purchase. Now, I wanted to bring this topic up in part because I'm interested in hearing Pat wax on about it because he has sort of a, a split on a lot of things. He likes to let people do sort of what they want, but he also likes when the government prohibits things from people that, that, that they consider unhealthy. So I think this is going to fail. I think it's inevitably going to fail. Prohibition always fails. Uh, it just develops a black market for it. And while there are certainly, obviously it would be healthier for people not to, not to smoke, but the idea that the, if we just make it illegal forever for anybody 18 and younger to ever purchase these, the result of it well, is it, not going is, to be... Is, isn't it illegal for people under the age of 18 to purchase cigarettes now? No, but like when they turn 19, they will not be allowed to purchase them. Oh, so 20, anyone 18 or under, under right now, that as soon as they become of it's age... It's like grandfathering in a down, helmet okay. in, in hockey. Years, so, in, but then even that age starts to roll back too. Like, would, would, like, so in this scenario, would I ever be able to not purchase cigarettes? Yes. As I understand it, it would roll back in so many years that you wouldn't be able to either. Okay. This is interesting, and I actually think this can work, especially in a place like, it. like New Zealand, because the population is so small, that the difference between banning something like cigarettes and banning something like alcohol is that the vast majority of people drink in some sort of capacity. Most people do not smoke, especially in the just every year that moves forward, fewer and fewer and fewer and fewer people smoke, especially in what we would consider, especially, let's say, like even the Commonwealth countries by and large, uh, and even in America, too. Like you see a huge decline because people know how bad smoking is for you. And this comes from someone who smokes. I, I love smoking. I wish I didn't smoke. And I think that if something like this was in place and I would have never started in the first place, and I wish that I hadn't started in the first place between, I don't know, like I have no problem with like weed being legalized. Cause I mean, it doesn't have the same health right. effects on you as cigarettes do. Like cigarettes are basically the worst thing that you can do to yourself. Like there's no reason for cigarettes to exist at all. I don't think. Uh, in terms of selling them to the public, where at, at, le at least you can you know, argue that, I mean, I don't know the specific details of it, but if you drink like a glass of wine a day, like there are health benefits to that. There's no health benefits to having a cig a day. I'll tell you that much. Is there any health benefits to rum? If what's not, well, let's ban that too, I guess. Is there, is there any health benefits to Big Macs? Well, maybe we should ban that too. You know, obesity rates are raising every single year, even though smoking rates are, are dropping. I, I'm saying... While I understand the push for it, I think it's going to do nothing but develop a black market. And the black market is, it, it's interesting, we're living in an era where things are being liberalized when it comes to drugs, when it comes to alcohol, when it comes to all kinds of stuff. But like tobacco is the one thing that people are cracking down on with a puritanical fervor. And it's like every time we try these crackdown things fail, but, but this time it won't. This time the most harsh crackdown imaginable is going to be efficacious. I, I don't think it will be. And I think there will be negative externalities to this type of action. And I also think it can open the door for uh, bans of other things that, like you said, these don't, things don't need to exist. There's no need for a Big Mac to exist. So like, it's bad for people's health. And yeah, in moderation, it's fine. But there's too many people who are moderate. And we have single payer health care. So we've got to pay for your health if you're obese. So we should ban that too. For anybody under the age oh, of 10. Oh, yeah, but, 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 but this is not America doing it. America would never do this. <laughs> but, about us. I mean, or New Zealand or any country. It seems I, like I, I'm looking at it right now. 9% of the population in New Zealand smokes. And it's not a big population to begin with. No. I feel like that they could get away with doing this because it feels like people would be on board for this. And when you went to different places around the world, they would not be on board for this. But if that's something that they want to do, I would think that it only helps public health. <laughs> I, no one's disputing that it doesn't help public health, but public health is not the only game in town here for a self-governing society. What, what, what do you care about what New Zealand does? Why is that your problem? 
most certainly not my problem. And I think it's a very fascinating case study to see how an English speaking Western democracy handles this prohibition. But we have a boatload of history to suggest it is going to flounder and uh, is not going to work. And it could cause some really negative consequences with black markets and organized crime that are those actually worth the cost? I'm not so sure that they are. And I'm not so sure we want to be encouraging the state to be eliminating people's liberties, even if they are self-injurious. I mean, people, we are living in a society where doctor-assisted death is has be, become legalized and where marijuana has become legalized and where alcohol prohibition on sales on Sundays has been done away with. We are moving inextricably, it seems, in a more libertine direction. But on this one thing, we're gonna completely snap the other way. It seems paradoxical and I don't think it can work. And so I'm just, I was fascinated to have the conversation because I think it's a very interesting piece. Uh, I, I, I think when you target something, when you target something like cigarettes, I, I just feel like the vast majority of like far closer to like looking at it now, like 9% of the people, like only around 14% of the people smoke in the United States. It's just a really galvanizing thing that people can get on board with that. There are so many people that don't smoke anymore because smoking has become less and less prevalent among all, like from the oldest generation when cigarettes became yeah. mass produced to now that people, there's going to be an under, there's an underground economy of cigarettes right now. I know people that go buy bags of cigarettes because they're cheaper. Sure, cigarettes are super expensive right now. Um, yeah. And they tend to, I mean, by and large, when you look at the demographics that the poorer you are, the more likely you are to smoke. And that drains a lot of the funds that come out of your bank. So if you can put it this in place now, I can see why they're going to do it. I bet you it works in New Zealand. I don't think it would work here. I don't think it would work in America. I think it might work in New Zealand. I don't know. I think it's contrary to human nature. These prohibitions always seem to to, to well. Then, on if you want that, we should legalize all drugs. Well, don't doesn't it feel like we are moving more <laughs> towards that direction than against it? Like, no. Does anybody think that we're moving? It does seem like we are moving towards a more liberalization. No, what, just what, about what will end up happening is that there'll be a decriminalization of doing the drugs. So even if you like, well, they, like well, if you get caught move. smoking a cigarette in. New Zealand, is it decriminalized? Do you go to jail for that, for possession yeah, of cigarettes? Or will it be like if, you know, if like, what is it in Portugal that all drugs are basically like legalized? I don't think you can just go to the store and buy cocaine. But if you get caught doing cocaine, you don't go to jail. You go to like a rehabilitation program. I just think that we should be very cautious when we withdraw people. But we liberties. aren't doing anything. New Zealand is doing something. Why, okay, again, comes, why do you I, care? Well, this is a commonwealth country much like our own you don't live there you live fucking halfway across the world well, listen that's certainly true but if it is as, as successful as you say then that can be a potential cause for the abridgments of rights in a country such as this it's possible we should always be vigilant about people's liberties being curtailed permanently which is what this would be uh it's it's certainly something we should not take with, with uh without great caution I think it makes perfect sense. And Tim, you even seem I'm like, I, I don't think the grandfathering in is going to eliminate people from getting it as they're older. Like someone our age, I believe in New Zealand will probably be able to buy cigarettes until they're say 90. But I think the grandfathering in makes perfect sense. And I don't even think those kids would care about it because as, as Pat has pointed out and what's clearly obvious is, like the amount of kids that smoke, like the progress that has been made in the anti-smoking um, crusade is probably as successful as anything maybe in the history of time, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, it feels like right. the rates. Of, it feels like the rates of everything else bad for you have gone up over the past seventy five years. And yeah. I mean, smoking is just the one that you can pick on that they want to get rid of it. They'd love to get rid of all of this stuff, but populations will not demand that. Populations like doing things. Too it's, many of us like going to McDonald's. Yeah, like even <laughs> like yeah, but there's not enough people that will fight for the smokers' right. I, I think. Well, it's in not this. Even those rights. It's just the idea that. It's been so successful with an educational campaign that I, I think if you wanted to really continue to curb and reduce smoking, I, I think further education and further promotion would be far more effective than blanket pro, uh, permanent prohibitions. I, You're I, I probably think. right. The trajectory that it's going on to keep instituting that in much the same way that all of our kids are 
you like just the concept of like recycling like and non-smoking like they've kind of gone in like different directions right we're teaching it or making it fundamental where by the time they get to that age it's not even a thing like i i mean maybe call me naive maybe there's a whole team of kids smoking behind the high school right now i there probably are but i don't know you're right it seems like the progress that has been made why do anything to stop that like consistent progress that will probably get to a very if like pat says is 14 percent now i'm sure it's only a matter of a decade before we're at like six percent yep it might stop that i mean i mean it's probably not a decade before it gets to six percent so like two decades but it it is but but i i feel like they probably feel like they're at the critical point right now where they can just like because that's the overall population that smokes if you have a population under 18 in the like percentage of people who smoke is like 0.5 percent like what's the harm of doing it if no one's buying the stuff anyway i think that's how they feel about it and then it's just gone and then no one really has to deal with something the main purpose is to just give you cancer you're right so you're right they're at a threshold where so few people where they would have the public support and it's you're right the threshold that we can now literally eradicate it if we take this step um, and it, it would, I'm interested. It, it would only feel like it would work in places with small populations, too, because there would still be whether or not, let's say, in the states, if you have 330 million people and like even let's say it gets down to 10 percent, 10 percent of people smoke, still 33 million people that smoke. You're really yeah. putting a lot of people out on this one and you will have enough voices that come up and you know, there's enough people tied in government to like tobacco lobbies that, you know, maybe they can start paying off a few people here and there to get a few fo- votes their way. If you have a shot to do this, you probably end up trying to take it, especially if there's very little pushback uh, in certain things like this. So if the time to do it is now, the time to do it is now. I mean, I'm not against it, to be perfectly honest with you. I'd have to quit smoking, obviously, if it came. Actually, I wouldn't because I would still be grandfathered in. I would like to quit smoking. But it's just the difference between smoking and something like, let's say, fast food. It's just that the level of addictive properties in cigarettes versus fast food is can't even really be measured on the same scale. Like, they're both bad for you, but you could eat fast food in moderation. You, no one smokes in moderation. That doesn't happen. Like, everyone who is, well, like, the, the weekend smoker, they just end up becoming smokers. <laughs> but I'm saying I don't think prohibitions work. We have a ton of evidence to suggest prohibitions are not very effective. Well, besides the alcohol prohibition in the 20s, what other prohibitions in like the last 100 years can you point to? I would say the prohibitions on marijuana use were so ineffective that the government had to turn around and legalize it. Well, was there a prohibition? Wasn't it just always, it had never been legal, had it? Well, for the longest time, there were no laws on it one way or the other because it just wasn't a part of culture. And then when it developed, the laws were passed against it as a narcotic. And those prohibitions were not effective. When are prohibitions effective? They, they, they tend not to be. You look back in in... You know, when it comes to religious prohibitions against celebrations and various sort of puritanical things in the 17th century, those prohibitions. Was there a prohibition on it, or was it just like a Nancy Reagan say no to drugs campaign that was, I guess, history showed didn't work at all and was just mocked, I guess, right? But there were legal consequences for it. Like they, like they were, it was prohibited. You couldn't legally sell it. The same, like I said, you can go back to the 16th, 17th, 18th century to see all kinds of things that were prohibited. Those prohibitions didn't work. They just defueled an underground or a black market. And so I'm just saying you need to be very careful about these things because black markets and organized crime will swoop in to fill in the gaps. And then I'm not so sure if you're not just substituting one set of problems for another. It could be. It won't even be close to the amount of people purchasing cigarettes on the black market versus purchasing cigarettes right now. Like, and like I said, the black market of cigarettes already exists. Right, but you don't think it would hyperdrive it? Of course, I, it I was in a 7 Eleven yesterday and a woman was haggling with the price of her carton, and it was a really depressing scene to be witnessing, I tell you. I mean, they're, they're instead of, like, especially here, and uh, I mean, whenever I go to New York or I go to California, it's kind of the same way. California, not so bad, because it'll still give you a few deals in certain places inside the state. But New York is like very expensive to buy cigarettes. When Paul moved here, uh, from Ontario to Nova Scotia, the price of cigarettes in Nova Scotia is like twenty bucks a pack. It's outrageous. Like instead, wow. of, like instead of making, 
basically, they've jacked up the prices so much that they thought that would quell the amount of people smoking. But since people are addicted to it, they're just spending more money on it at the moment. So they can try out whatever you want. I think once you get to that critical point of it tipping back over and people not doing it anymore, it's probably a good thing to get rid of. It really has no benefit to society. <laughs> Like none whatsoever. At least with well, like, at least with weed, you can consider it in the same ballpark as like alcohol. Like a lot of people stopped drinking and started smoking weed. Like no one's. No yeah, one. no, that that's true. But again, like liberty in and of itself is valuable. Haven't we seen like the past five years? That's not like people are fine with giving up a, a few liberties. Some people there. are, but that doesn't. Yeah, but I mean, there were de degrees of sa sacrificing your liberty. I mean, and, and one is banning everything. cigarettes. That's it. That's where you're planting the flag. Well, I'm, I'm saying a permanent ban of a substance like that might actually be something to plant a flag on as a, as a, a matter of principle. You just love uh, cigs too much. I think that's a problem. No, no, I, I don't think that's true. I would listen. I don't like alcohol that much. If they banned alcohol tomorrow permanently again, it wouldn't affect my life very much. I would be as ardently opposed to it as I am this. All right. I might cut this cuss mm. corner. This one's not very funny. It's not about, this wasn't supposed to be a funny one. They're I mean, all funny ones. Funny. They're supposed to be funny. You sort of did a funny thing. Okay. People would to... rather hear about how your dinner at your dad's was after the Dolphins. Jet we didn't have a dinner. As soon as I walked in the door, he started playing that stupid snowman with the Dolphins theme song. And I yelled and left and, and, and I had to leave and, and not <laughs> be in the room anymore. You, I couldn't be around it. You got triggered by a snowman? The snowman sings the dolphins touchdown song when you push the button. What's the got a dolphin? What's the dolphins touchdown song? Miami Dolphins, yeah, exactly. Miami Dolphins, Miami Dolphins number one. Yeah, so like, you push a from, button and the, and the snowman shakes back and forth and sings that song. And so as soon as I walk in the house, he pushes that button. I was like, all right. And when you're talking dolphins, you're talking Super Bowl. We yeah. are the Miami Dolphins, Miami Dolphins, Miami Dolphins number one, 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 one. Yes, I just couldn't. I couldn't take that. I walked in, heard that. It was like it was like the SpongeBob meme. It was like ah, I'm out of here, sort of thing. <laughs> I'm gonna head out. <laughs> That's what happened. Your dad knows how to repel you also, I guess. Like, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna have dinner with Tim. I'll just play the snowman when he walks in the door. Yeah, I was like, nope, I don't need this. Goodbye. I thought you were made from tough fiber. I am, but I was like, I don't need to. I've just spent the last several hours listening to how great the Dolphins are. Now they're going to win the Super Bowl. No one, you, 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 you spent that day with me and no one said that. that so now, said. now you're just making stuff up. No, no, that was said from our Dolphins fan. Right. You mean when you when the Jets scored a touchdown and you wagged your finger in his face and then he slapped you and then you complained that you bruised really easily and then you complained I that do. he I hit you? I paper skin. I bruised with stuff like that. Yeah, you were just being fucking annoying the entire time. Anyway, then I came home, had to deal with the snowman. And I was like, you know what? I, I just don't. I just don't need this. And then I went home and I watched the, the games sort of like by myself, quietly. You retired to your week. millennial loft because people were too mean to you? I, I, I settled to my uh, my easy chair and had a bit of a nap. Because people were too mean to you out in the outside world? I just don't think you hear about the Dolphins constantly. Oh, Dolphins. You bring dolphins it on yourself. Yeah. All you do is talk about the Dolphins. You go on to you Dolphins You say you're Reddit. on Dolphins Reddit. You say you spend Saturday afternoons playoff machining how yeah. they'll, like, their fate. So it's yes. you. <laughs> I can't help it. You want it. You're addicted to it. All you actually want to hear about is the Dolphins, it sounds like. Yeah, well, you know what? I hope the dolphins are banned. That'd be nice. There's a problem. Dolphins, and guess what? You get the treat of the dolphins getting the illustrious position of playing a nice primetime game this week and getting spoken about and broken yeah. down. And, and Tua is going to be praised so much by Greasy and Riddick, right? Oh, yeah. And if he makes a mistake, none of the mistakes will be his. You can be sure about that. You're going to lose to Tua and Trevor Lawrence in back-to-back -back weeks. And then Thanks, you're... Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. No, we're not. We're not losing this week. Not happening. <laughs> but, like, then what? Then I'll be really upset. You're upset no, already. That's, bad. that's like, you, you can acknowledge that's really bad for your brand, right? Yes, of course. Yeah, but his brand is losing. <laughs> like, his brand is being sad and pathetic. This would only enhance his brand, I think. No, but the two guys he's harder on than anybody, Tua and Lawrence. <laughs> he plays in back-to-back -back weeks. I mean, I don't think Trevor Lawrence has thrown a touchdown in, like, 
eight weeks or something like that. Something outrageous. This would be the week he throws for like 500 yards and six touchdowns. So, Pat, are we making an alternate Lawrence like three touchdown prop this week? Oh, yeah. 100%. I'm going to make a note to look for Lawrence touchdown props. Oh, this is one that I wanted to bring up. I threw this to you guys a little bit like a few weeks ago. And it was, and I want to get the wording of this right. What is the most devastating sports injury you can remember in your lifetime? And I don't mean the most vicious, hard to look at, like Joe Theismann type of injury. I meant to you personally, like someone you loved got hurt and they were just never the same. Because I feel like there's one answer to this for me that's not even close to anything else. And then I really have to rack my brain for the rest of them. What did you guys come up with? Do you want me to give you mine? I think I would pick Ken Griffey Jr. That was mine. Yeah, that was always mine. Lindros, too. I I, Lindros. I, I hated Lindros so much. Oh, I liked him. The worst. The nut him. low. Nut low Lindros. Oh, yeah, that's great. Uh, I'm six foot seven and I play junior hockey. I'm awesome. Yeah, give me a break. He did the Eli Manning before the Eli Manning was a thing, refusing to go to the Nordiques. That's true. And then the Nordiques moved. Yeah, but he did that. People don't remember. He did that in the OHL. He refused to go to Sault Ste. Marie, I believe. And he demanded a trade or they had to trade him to Oshawa. Like he'd been calling his shot um, before even, even that. But they got Forsberg. That's... Uh, they got more trade. They got more than that. They got a bunch of them. They got Forsberg. They got someone else too. Wasn't it Sundin? Like Sandis Ozalinch or something? I thought they got Sundin in that deal too. No, I no, don't think Sundin was the Nordiques' own first overall pick. Was also. he? Yeah. Eric Lindros have that rookie card. Trade. Maybe it was like Mike Ricci. May have been one of the guys they end up. Yeah, they got a that. full slew and and picks. Yeah, it set them up. I mean, the most be- personally devastating injury was in 2008 when Brett Favre got hurt against the Seahawks because I think the Jets would have won the Super Bowl that year. See, I would I mean, say it's, for it's, Tim, it's, it's better that he got hurt so you could pretend like they would have won the Super Bowl. Like you count it made a lot- in, in your crazy mind, you count that as a Super Bowl in your mind. No, I don't. I I count it as a year that we should have won the Super Bowl. Uh, there's been a couple of those in in past years, but that's uh, one of them. And I. So, Jeff, to the Philadelphia Flyers was Eric Lindros. To the Nordiques was Peter Forsberg, Mike Ricci, Chris Simon, Ron Hextall, Steve du- Steve Duchesne. Was it Duchesne? Is that how- that doesn't spell Duchesne, does it? Oh, then. Is maybe, it- maybe it is. Yes. Does he spell it? Does Steve Duchesne, did he spell his last name really bizarrely? Does it end S-E? Yeah, S-N-E. Yeah. All right, so they got Steve yeah, Duchesne. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Kerry so Huffman, two first round picks and fifteen million dollars. <laughs> wow! Feel um, like, and they won what, like two cups because of it? Well, I would say for Tim, like, isn't the most devastating injury he's been a part of was his very own New York Jets member Mo Lewis ending Drew Bledsoe's career, which changed not sorry career that I misspeak changing the course of history right there right yeah, i mean that's I the one like even if that hadn't happened brady was good enough that he would have taken over for that team sooner or later it it, it hastened it but it didn't like it wasn't like the thing that if that had not happened then brady would never have played and they would i don't know but it doesn't I happen that year there is no tuck rule there is no like 9 11 year super bowl versus the rams and and it just it i don't know those- definitely does change things but it's not like brady wouldn't still have found a way to start for that team and win I mean, if people forget the next year they didn't even make the playoffs so uh he would have taken over probably by 03 regardless uh but yeah that that's a fair point but i think it's always been a, a bit overdone i guess tiger's injuries you'd have to put up there but it wasn't like one thing it was a bunch of different things wasn't it like you had the knee injury then you had the car crash then you had another injury. Then you had like a back surgery. And then you had another car crash. Like it's it's been a rough go for Tiger on the injury front. But he keeps coming back is the thing. Never like peak Tiger levels. I mean, he did come back and win a Masters. So it worked out from that. I'm just trying to think of some other ones. Willis McGahee, I, I like back when I watched college, 
in that national title game. Like I thought he was going to be like the next Barry Sanders, the way that he was being talked about. I was a kid at the time. Uh, he probably wouldn't have worked out that way. Although he was still pretty good in the pros, yep. but to, like watching his knee bend the other way, like it, knowing that was his last college football game too, was pretty devastating. But he, you know, he got lucky. It would never happen today. He still ended up being like 21st overall oh, yeah. in the twenties by the bills. You would never get that break. Um, today off the injury i think also uh drew Brees. the chargers are seven and eight it's a meaningless week 17 game and he the broncos uh sack him sack him hard he gets sandwiched he tears up that shoulder and the concept of the chargers franchise tagging him goes out the window and he fails a physical for the dolphins and i think that is one of the laziest reframings in the history of sport but it can get written however you know the winner wants to write it tom benson was moving that team like the new orleans saints when drew Brees signed there when sean payton took that job that was siberia in nfl terms it was siberia like they were trying to move to san antonio that is the truth they wanted no point of with that team or with that market or any part of it. And Katrina made it impossible to leave. Like you can't like leave now. We just, right. You just, whatever. And how that all just formulated into them being now just a, a, such a pronounced place within the national football league. Um, and a, a tent pole, stadium city uh that event that gets all its primetime games and regular rotation super bowl i guess the other two would, would be rotated back the other way i would say kevin durant not being able to play at all in the nba finals gave the raptors a championship yeah the but, I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff like that guys who can't play in a game kevin durant came back and was like the best player in basketball again it didn't really affect him like his career wasn't significantly altered because of it. Like when we look back, no, even if he never wins right another up. championship, he's going to have two instead of three, like no big deal. Uh, yeah, I'd say, right I'd say Anthony Kim would be one because oh, yeah, he disappeared off the face of the earth to collect his insurance money. He can't play again. Mark Pryor would be the other one because Mark Pryor felt like he was going to be amazing. And he was, but just every year it was something else. And he just, he could never sustain it at all. Yeah. And it felt like he was okay, going to be so the best pitcher of our generation. I've got one. Hit me. Mr. Perfect, Kurt Henning. That he died at a young age? Because he wasn't wrestling. No, that he got hurt. And he, I guess the thing you said about Anthony Kim, he took some crazy Lloyds of London. It's like this famous wrestling story. Like he took some insane injury settlement. Oh, really? Um, Yeah. Swear to God. Huh. He effed up his back. He took some insane injury settlement, and I think it was never worth getting back in the ring again. I mean, we missed. I had written down here Grant Hill when he hurt his an ankle. Oh yeah, that's that's a really good one. Yeah, he never. Yeah, he was the got that infection afterwards, and just his career just was was kind of over, even though it wasn't technically over. That was it for him. He made a nice comeback with the Suns as like a role guy for a few years. Sure, sure. But, like, he wasn't one of the best two or three players in basketball, which he was. I don't know if there's an injury, and the story isn't, like, really done yet. But it's crazy. Like, I get, or you just chuck it up to football 101. But Odell, in many regards, like, how crazy that career started and how just trouble he's had getting any traction since. Now, is that... Do we think that's necessarily 100% injury related or was that just a just confluence of circumstances of, you know, he maybe thought he was a bit better than he was ego driven, injury driven, bad teammate driven towards the end of guys getting him the ball over the past four years or so. Maybe like, also like it, it feels like a lot of different being things. over a little overrated because of a, a cat, a highlight, like sort well, of changes. Yeah. perception also a bit right and, and i think that he caught what like 25 touchdowns his first two years in the league and a lot of them were huge highlight reel type catches so yeah i think that he just may have been a bit overrated but i think justin jefferson now like after odell and maybe like randy moss maybe like is now at the point where he's having the 
two best opening years of his career of any receiver ever. We'll see where it goes from here. But normally, yeah, the the stark drop off for Odell. I do because Odell on the Rams is kind of looking a bit Odell. He's just o- older now, and obviously just not going to be the same. But do we really think he was limited by injuries, or was it a whole bunch of different things? Because he got hurt what like three times in three years. It's a mixture of things. Be, having been a bit overrated, plus injuries, plus bad team circumstances, plus going to an overrated quarterback. Tim wants to say too, right? Well, there's no doubt about that. He he'll tell you. Ask him. His dad will tell you about it too. <laughs> I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think of other ones. Justin Morneau is a bad one. Like, he won AL MVP, and then he, is, he got a concussion, and, like, he was never the same. Yeah, that happened here in Toronto. He, like, slid into John McDonald's leg and never... Uh... My least favorite Blue Jay of all time, Johnny Mack. Oh, God, I hate I'll say guy. from a Charger perspective, Kevin Mawai, that cheap SOB Tim's familiar with. But I don't know that he was a cheap SOB in the Jets, but that was a Jeff Fisher tactical thing. Blew out every single piece of Sean Merriman's leg, and it never it never happened again for him. Yeah, but, but that, he that, was... that led to him being on the challenge and then me interviewing him about the challenge on Radio Row at the Super Bowl. So I feel like that all really worked out for him. Yeah, I, I, I guess, but he was on like some electric like run, and then everything inside the knee got blown out because of a low blow by uh, Jeff Fisher's coaching. <laughs> okay, so a couple of things. First, I was told today by a friend about uh, about the music functionality on my phone. He said, "Now that you've got new earphones, maybe you should look into." not streaming your music through YouTube. Now, as everybody knows, Spotify should be hard to use. It's hard to figure out. It's, it's not, not really for me. It's, it's not hard but to figure out. Have you tried that? Down- hey, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Have you actually downloaded the Spotify app yet? No, I don't know how to use it. I can't okay, use it. Okay, so know. when you say you can't use it or don't know how to use it, have you ever tried to use it? Yeah, I think I have in the past and just found you, it. You, th- you think that you have. Yeah, I, I think I did a couple of years ago and was buffaloed by it and, and just gave up on it. So... Here's my thing. Like, apparently, Apple Music is much easier to use. So I was told today, much easier to use than I thought. Like, I thought to have Apple Music, you had to, like, burn your songs off CDs onto it or jailbreak your phone in some way to get access to it. Apparently, it's just there. You have to pay money. But, like, the music's just there that you can stream. So I'm wondering whether I should pursue this or whether I should try once again to fight with the Spotify. I think that you should go with Spotify. I, I think it's easier to use. I mean, I don't have a ton of experience with Apple Music. I just find that Spotify is super easy. You get all your podcasts on there as well. You don't need two separate apps for that if that's the way that you want to roll with that. And you can have the free version or the premium version. Like the free version will just have ads, but you can pay like nine bucks a month or whatever it is. And on Spotify, you can download all the songs onto your phone. You don't need to stream them at any time. I find that the, the quality of everything is really good. Searching on it is super easy. You can make your own playlist super easy. But I'm just more familiar with Spotify. I don't really know which one is better, but I know that Spotify is easy to use and you should probably be using it. I find it perplexing. Now, on to my main subject, which is this. I wanted to throw something out first. Jeffrey, for Christmas, guess what Tim received from either his mom or dad as a gift? Guess. Guess. What's something that he has hated for the longest time, but now all of a sudden really seems to like car charger. I, I, I uh, computer and uh, something technology. You're, you're, sh- you're warm. You're warm. I kind of referenced it earlier in the little segment, Jeff. And uh, an, uh, uh, a new phone. Tell them, Tim, tell the people. I got wireless ear AirPods. <laughs> And like, so they're really cool. And here's why. And it must be because I have the most modern and up-to-date version. When I take one out of my ear, it automatically stops playing the music. And then when you put them back in, it starts it again. And I was very, very like sick to my stomach, nervous about how I was going to like figure out how the synchronization of the, you just click on like one button and it just somehow works. And it, it charges now the, the cord that came with it I got rid of because I don't have the I don't have that new modern USB C B W whatever cord. So that's not good to me. But it, it also clicks into my other cords. 
And like, it's really neat to be able to like leave your phone in the kitchen and then like walk to the seller to get something and you don't have to bring your phone with you. That That's actually a really cool function. Great and function. I, I understand that people who are tastemakers and who are cool will laugh at me because you're, and it's true, they, they kind of do look dumb. I will concede that. They don't look as good as wired earphones, but <laughs> what? I do think they're kind of cool. And, and I, I'm getting quite a bit of use out of them. So I didn't didn't expect it, but it's actually been a really useful gift. So how come? Oh, hold on. I was going to say, no, uh, my apologies on that one. I stepped on you. But Jeff and I and everyone you know described wireless headphones in exactly the same way that you just described them after having them, yet you didn't believe any of the 20 people who told you this. Well, but it's not quite like you didn't tell me about like turning like it automatically going on and off and you take it out of your ears or like the cool the cool looking charging case that it has <laughs> like it fits right into the little charging case that you can bring now you do have to bring that with you everywhere instead of your phone i suppose but uh nevertheless it, it just has these i think maybe because mine are like the newest type that like it has all these new functionalities that other ones don't it doesn't but until i mean my greatest fear is still like in a week i'll have lost one Feel like that is still going to happen but they're really cool but uh my point was or the other story i was going to tell was i'm so annoyed at places who tell me they're going to be open on christmas day and then aren't i the mcdonald's around here were supposed to be open on the 25th of december this was a promise that was made to us by who and I, by who just i saw it like advertised or whatever that mcdonald's where? would be open on december 25th no where, what do you where, mean where, where did you where, 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 where did you see that advertised i don't know where i saw it I so you did so it. so you are no. making up that you yeah. saw it no, okay I continue to, i went I, I actually went to mcdonald's several times over christmas weekend i went christmas eve i went i tried to go twice on and christmas they usually night. put a sign on the door like specific Christmas Eve, Didn't, Christmas it, Day, New it, Year's it, Eve, it, New Year's oh. Day, hours of operation oh, Jeff. this time of year. Jeff, he went to McDonald's on Christmas Eve, and he just assumed he knew what time that they, they were open till, and he showed up after they were closed and went full Karen on the people working there. Oh, no, no, no. That wasn't that was a Tim Hortons. That was not a McDonald's. Oh. McDonald's you're literally closed. number one. You're like top three case for me being more insane with you. It was my discourse with a Harvey's employee a year ago. The and Tim here Hortons? you are. Here that I go you are to, accosting, Tim, accosting. No, Tim no, no. I didn't, I didn't accost anybody. The Tim Hortons, this particular Tim Hortons, always closes at 4 p.m. every Christmas Eve. I know that for a fact because I've been going to this Tim Hortons my entire life. I know that it closes at four o'clock. Turns out when it I doesn't. I get to the drive-through at 3:15, and somebody answers the box and says, "I'm sorry, we're closed." I'm like, "No, you're not. It's not four o'clock yet. It's still light out. I need to have my coffee." And they're like, no, we're closed. But like, you don't close till four o'clock on Christmas Eve. You never close early. I said, do you have anything on? I'll, I mean, I'll pay you the money. I, I just need my coffee. And they said, no. And I had to drive away and go to a McDonald's to get coffee and then got a junior chicken. But like, I, I was very annoyed by that. And then Christmas day, I go to pick up my grandmother in the car and figure, well, whatever. You know, I haven't had any lunch yet and supper's still going to be a little bit. So I'll roll to the drive through and get a little bit of McDonald's. Well, the McDonald's that I go to, a different one, that's closed. It should be open. McDonald's must be open on Christmas Day. I have to travel what like time? 20 minutes out of the out of my way and waste 20 minutes of my Christmas Day trying to find another McDonald's to go to before I can pick up my grandmother. It's incredibly frustrating stuff. Thankfully, on Boxing Day, everything was open normally. When it came to fast food, I didn't have these issues. Most but fast food, like this is standard fast food, Jewish fast food guy. Like if you think anybody knows... The hours of oppo for Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, it's the fat Jew, Tim. Yes. <laughs> like, that's just a fact. You cannot debate me. The Tim thing with the Christmas Day, yeah. Christmas Day is, is some places don't open at all and other ones open later. Like, they, every employee, Christmas morning, early Christmas Day, you can do your Christmas thing and they open later in the day. No, they need to be open for me. They need to be available for people who need to pick stuff up. You just said me, by the way. Not people. You said me. They well, need to be open me, for I mean me. By me, I mean the customer. Why couldn't you just, instead of Tim Hortons, don't, aren't you a, a barista? Why'd you have to go to Tim Hortons? I was out and about, and I needed to get my coffee before. It was 3.15. There was no reason that they should have been closed. Well, except for they closed at 3. 
but they don't. They never do. I have been going to that Tim Hortons. So, so do you think that you know their hours better than they know their hours? This I is, this is like when people, hours this is the yes, equivalent of when people on the internet comment to me about my show. Well, did you know this about your show? No, I had no fucking idea. Uh, I don't, I, I don't do my own show the entire time. I have no idea what goes into it. Please tell me your, your deep insights that you know what is going on, but you know better than the people who own the place that work there and set the hours, but you actually know the real time. In this instance, absolutely. I do. They oh answered God. the box. Yeah. They could have get- Cause they're, they're probably still there. And the fact that you want that, here's how not a man of the people you are, you know, that you want to try to pay them for coffee and everything like that. If anything, you said, do you have any extra coffee? I won't pay you for it because they've already done their tills at that point. So if you try to pay for something else, then you fuck up their entire account and then they have to be there for like another two hours and reset everything. So you weren't even looking out for them. You were looking out for you. Look, I wanted my coffee. It was still light out. 24th of December is a business day. Uh, Dude. Like, there's no, also with the 24th and the 25th, there is no standard time amongst the chains. Like all of the individual franchisees operate independently on hours of operation for A, what they think works best for them and the neighborhood they're in and their staffing situation. Like they literally all these stores, for, like the chains, the biggest chains on Christmas day, Christmas Eve, they kind of make their own hours. They don't have to like the the one Domino's near me is closed on Christmas Eve. There's another Domino's near me that's open on, on Christmas Eve. Like it just, it's a choose your own adventure between the individual franchisees with the, those holiday closing. Well, I I certainly learned a lot. So next Christmas, when it comes around, I'll be making telephone calls before I go out to find out who's open and who isn't because there's no way to know anymore. The apps lied to the, the Google lied to me. Because you open up Google and you look at hours of operations. But what it does it say? I did this too. Google specifically says it's a holiday. Hours may vary. Like May Google's- vary. May vary. Not well, really. They're literally saying it's Christmas and I don't know what time this individual franchise is closing. Well, but I need to know these things because otherwise I've got to spend or waste 30 minutes extra of my Christmas day that I'll never get back having to drive to another McDonald's. Now, how is that fair to me? Well, it sounds like you just would have wasted those minutes anyway, by based that's on what, affair, based on it? what you're complaining about. That's my business, isn't it? Well, you wasted them. You didn't have to waste them when you showed up to the place and it was closed. You could have just turned back. I and was went home. hungry, and supper wouldn't be for a while. It's Christmas, and they should be open. They're always open. Maybe it's should. not like I'm expecting somewhere to be open that's never open. They're always open on Christmas. Well, when you it, say I, when you say when you when you person. when you say always open. Doesn't sound like that's the case. You also don't crazy. know the situation, like with the, the you know, the fancy variants going around. Well, now, staffing. Listen, there was a staffing issue. I, I, I completely understand that. But that didn't seem to be the issue because it would be open later in the day. Or they, did, or, they did, or, or they just said, these are our two least profitable days of the year. Why don't we just close up shop? Why didn't you ask them for a couple day old donuts while you were there? I just, they could have made me a cup of coffee. I was there. They weren't making you shit, buddy. <laughs> You're right, they didn't. But I have spent, I can't tell you how many thousands of dollars at that particular time. Oh, no. I bet you they go out of business because although you say you won't go there, you'll go there every day anyway. I mean, I won't go there then. I mean, I have options. The most pathetic thing might be a, a regular Tim Hortons employee, a customer not getting what they want, and then referencing how much money they've spent on Tim Horton's coffee. Well, I have spent a lot of money at that particular place. My entire So it's like 78% of this insane country. So I want, I, I just they never close that early. All of a sudden out of the blue, they do close when they're not really close. Out, out of the blue. Out of the blue. Yes, out of the blue. Christmas Eve out of the blue. Like it's, like it's March 7th. <laughs> Out of the blue. They never close at three o'clock. They always close at four. And it's just, you can understand why I would find that very distressing. You expect to have something and you can't have it. And like, you appreciate. Sounds like my press conferences, buddy. You expect and you can't. And you're like, what is going on? I, I just, it's very upsetting when you can't have something that you expect to have. How, and, I, I gotta say. How do you get through the day? Because all this just sounds so terrible that I don't know if I could go on if this happened to me. All right. I know you're making light of it, but if something, if you were in a similar situation. Give me an example. Give, thing, give me an example and put me in it and then describe it to me and I'll let you know how I would feel. I don't know. I'm sure there are things that you want to do every day or particular days 
and you expect it to be open or available and it isn't. Oh, and I'm sure it would for, cause you for ex- You know what? For example, uh, let's say going to the gym. I wanted to go to the gym on the, what is it? The 24th. So I called the gym that is next to me. They said that they were closing early that day. So you know what I did? I went before they closed. But I wasn't hungry then. Yeah, but I called in advance to see if they were going to be open. Because I know, like, all every fucking place that's around, that they have different well, ho- even- they different, they have different have holiday hours. And I even went to Google, Jeff, and it said holiday hours may vary. So I called them instead. I didn't think I needed to because I've been going to that one for Christmas. No, because you have main character syndrome. This is just another, this is just another part of your privilege, pal. Check your privilege. No. You entitled I, I, fuck. A, I, I'm... I, I, I think I'm entitled to this. Why? <laughs> like, it's always been the same time. And then they change it? Like, I, how many yeah, you, are so, like you are so wrong about everything when trying to remember anything that how can we even believe you that that's true? But like, Tim, in some way I can respect, like, you are comfortable with how they operate on Christmas Eve. But Christmas Eve is such a, like, a special, different night, like, closing that... Even like every year you should like, you need to follow up on that because it, it can be such a big variable. It's Christmas Eve. Additional. But it's not ad- Christmas Eve at three o'clock in the afternoon. It's still a middle oh of my a God. business day. No, it's, it's, it's not. Cause it's just like, it's just like the work that gets done between Christmas and new year's day. Most people just fuck off from work and no one really seems to care. Well, it just, I don't think it's a good customer. Saying it's a business day would be like saying the afternoon before Christmas break at school is like a normal <laughs> afternoon at school. I don't think that that's a fair analogy. That's a actually that is a perfect analogy when it comes down anyway, to it. I, but I, all, I but also here's how here's why Tim is an unreliable storyteller in this sense, Jeff, because he'll say things. He said it on the show probably two weeks ago, last week, throughout the course of the year, that he'll reference something that happened, like oh that happened a few days ago, or a few. He'll usually say oh that just happened pretty recently a few years ago and then we'll date check him it's like oh that happened in 2006 tim so maybe these were the hours in 2004 when you used to go you have no idea what it's been probably the past decade i feel very comfortable you feel ah once again your feelings not facts pal well not in this instance it wasn't but look i learned a valuable lesson i take responsibility i'll be making a telephone call next time you can't trust the google you can't trust what you've known from the past you have to pick up the phone and call. I've learned a lesson. I'm, I've grown from that. I, 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 I ask you a question? Uh, no, hold on. I, I like that you saw hours may vary and took that to mean, well, that should, they may vary. Of, of course they're going to be with you. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, yeah, fucking I mean, moron? They may vary, but I don't want them to vary, so they're not going to vary. Like, do you have brain injuries? What's wrong with you? No, may vary. Well, why would they vary if they've never varied before? Like, if they're closed, they'll say closed. But may vary, I don't take that as serious. Oh, my God. <laughs> may vary you're right it may happen it's um, literally google saying like you we, we're not as confident in this information yeah no that's google saying we don't know the times here's what they normally are but it's it's, it's the holiday we have no idea no one updated it like no, google I'm is not. smart enough to know it's christmas eve and they like need to give you some kind of warning that please triple check well i'm annoyed by it i need to quickly go back to the airpods <laughs> Okay. Like your your ability to like turn on a dime on them. And you've done this with lots of other technologies. Like technology you can turn on a dime for. Tua winning nine straight games and going to the playoffs. Listen, my like I don't love Tua. Like I have a documented history here. Again, you're you've 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 lapped me seven times. I can't even compete with you. But how could you not like who it's the NF freaking out that you could have this turn on AirPods, but a quarterback winning nine straight games, taking his team into the playoffs in a conference that we all assumed was ultra competitive and ultra talented and ultra crowded. And that would be worth nothing, but you can flip on the AirPods. Well, look, I'd never experienced the AirPods before. And part of my criticisms of them were I was afraid I'd never figure out how to get them to work. And, and how and did it take you less than five seconds to sync them? It was pretty easy. And I was very afraid that I would be made fun of and mocked because they look dumb. But I've just decided to overcome the fact that their functionality to me is more important than than uh, than their style. Who besides you said they look dumb? 
there's a reason that all those magazines and all those tastemakers. What you mean? You, the the, mag the magazine that you're pointing to is Teen Vogue, by the way. There's other ones on top of that. It, no, it's true. What, what, what are the What are the other ones? I, I've seen them. I can't quote. Oh, really? You've seen them? Have it's you? The that that the youth of today find wired earphones to be far more aesthetically preferable than the those of us who are essentially boomers out there with our AirPods. No, like New York, LA hipsters like yeah. the look. Yeah, exactly. Those are the tastemakers. <laughs> they just are, like it or not. Oh, Tim. Um, Jeff, be before we move on to the late set of games, and I don't know if Tim is comfortable with this, but he shared with us, regaled us his story about Christmas dinner with his grandma, that, Tim, if you could tell Jeff, it would be lovely. Oh, it was, it was a dinner for the ages. I was next to my grandmother, and my brother was in town, and my brother kept, well, first my grandmother started telling, it's as if I was interested in this. She was going like scene by scene explanations of old episodes of Christmas episodes of Gilligan's Island. And like, as if I was interested in what like the professor did next. And then, so she told me like, like went through like two episodes where the Gilligan's Island Christmas episodes with me. And then like my brother was complaining that he thought maybe he had face blindness or facial blindness that he couldn't recognize people's faces. And she said that wasn't a thing that he had and he was making that up and that he was soft. And uh, I thought that was funny. And then he talked about, he thought maybe he had a deviated septum. My grandma said, you don't have that either. You're just soft. She said, if you had to get a cavity done for, for your teeth, you probably want a full anesthetic so you weren't awake. You're not, you're, not, uh, you're just soft. And my brother said, I'm not soft. And I thought, oh my God, this is quite a day. And then, and then she would tell me old stories about like the Dick Van Dyke show. And like I drove her home and she was telling me stories about like what the Flying Nun was like. Like I didn't watch the Flying Nun. Why would I be interested in that? What about how you chastise people at Christmas for not dressing up for Christmas? What did you wear to Christmas dinner? I wore, well, actually, I chastise people for Thanksgiving dinner, not Christmas. No, it was no, on a previous cuss quarter, on a very custy Christmas last year, you had the same rant about Christmas. I dressed up. In a, a nice Christmas sweater and a pair of uh, pair of nice blue jeans. Oh, blue and jeans! As, oh, I did, did, we did, did, did re didn't realize you were at happy hour, pal, with your friends from the we, auto parts store. Oh, please! They're nice, clean ones. And as we were divvying up the food, I spilled some cranberry on my uh, on my jean on my thigh and my jeans. Me and my grandma said, "You have to go change. I'm not sitting next to somebody who's got food spilled all over." <laughs> so I said, "Okay, that's fair enough. I agreed with her about that." And so I got up and, you know, I changed into just. A, Something quick because supper was getting cold. So something quick. I just threw a pair of shorts on. You're wearing shorts at Christmas Day. I did, but look, it was look, I wanted to make sure that my grandmother was happy and that Christmas went well. And like, so that's what I did. But yeah, she just regaled me with old stories of old television shows that I've never seen and uh made fun of my brother for being soft. It was it was pretty funny. See. I here I thought you were you said you were gonna let you put on a show for her with all her favorite actors like Wilford Brimley and Lucille Ball and well Jeff that. it's hard for me to do that at Christmas time since I'm no longer with us and I got caught watching that Lucille Prime video uh, Am that movie with uh, Nicole Kidman Nicole Kidman and uh, shit he's so good Javier Bardem Bardem yeah right that's who it was. And the whole time I can't think of Tim's impression. Like it ruined the movie. For did, me. did now was Nicole Kidman's impression as good as Tim's? <laughs> well, but my impression is not young Lucille Ball. It's older Lucille Ball. Yeah, but, you even didn't you? Yeah, whatever. I, I, I also do a mean Kelsey Grammer too, as we found it on the weekend. Oh yes, uh, Jeff, you you should hear this Kelsey Grammer impression. It's pretty good. Oh, Jeffrey, it's a very good impression of Kelsey Grammer. That just sounds like oh, you. It sounds like you. You're doing your <laughs> voice. No, Patrick, that's not quite right. Now you're doing a British accent. No, but see, it's not British and it's not American. It's an admixture of the two. That just that sounded completely different than the first two attempts you just did. No, the last one just sounded literally like Tim. Yeah. <laughs> no, it didn't. Stop saying that. It's a good impression. I get compliments. From who? I did some impressions from my grandmother on the drive home and she liked them. She thought they were good. I did my W.C. Fields, which she thought was really funny. <laughs> yeah, and then I did Kelsey Grammer. 
That was my Christmas. I'm glad she's. I, I I worry that her blindly being nice to you your entire life has left you like this. What do you mean? Jeff knows what I mean. The viewers know what I mean. Yeah. Jeff is having a heart it. attack over there. <laughs> Well, like she's the reason that like his favorite ice cream is great, not raisin, or no, or, or he can do or he can do these impressions and think that they're good. Well, Patrick, they are pretty good. Who was that supposed to be? It's Kelsey Grammer. It doesn't sound like fucking Kelsey Grammer. It does. No, it doesn't. Do you know? Do you do you have like auditory problems? Do you not hear? Like, if your brother no, has facial blindness, you know what? I figured this out. I think you're just really, really, really envious of how good I am at these impressions. <laughs> you got me. You can't have I'm, so, this I'm so envious of your so amazing you created, impressions. So you have created this whole universe where you have to pretend like all my impressions are bad, just so that I can't get the credit that I'm due. That's not me creating a universe. That is the universe we live in. I, I, I don't agree. I People say nice things. All right. Okay. So people should rank Tim's uh, impressions down in the comment section. Can we hear a Christopher Walken? Yeah, sure. I, I'm happy to do one for you. I wasn't in a lot of Christmas movies, as you know. At least I don't think so. But I could have been in some. That's, that's, that's a dead ringer. Now do a conversation of Christopher Walken talking to Kelsey Grammer. What? 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 do you think, Kelsey, about my impressions? Well, you know, I think you're very good at these sorts of things. What is he fucking... Is he the queen's husband? Thank you. So Well, no, but you have to understand, Kelsey Grammer has that... Yeah, yeah. He, yes, Kelsey Grammer has a mid-Atlantic accent. You keep saying that, but you're not doing that. You're doing either you with no accent or what you think is a British accent. Well, but the mid-Atlantic, like the William F. Buckley accent is sort of... Yeah, British. but you aren't doing that. How do you not hear that? In my ears, I hear it's great to me. Well, that's the thing. If your brother has facial blindness, maybe you have auditory I blindness. Don't, I don't maybe maybe you're like secret deaf. You can only that's hear things on one a, pitch. I don't think my brother does have facial blindness. I don't know why he said that. Maybe but he My does. grandmother was certainly not putting up with his nonsense. <laughs> she called him out of that right away. Honestly, these stories, they are charming, and, and I don't have any of my grandmothers or grandparents, and it, it, a lot of it would have been very similar, minus me giving her an imitation routine. Uh, but yeah, so I don't know. I get these warm, fuzzy feelings when you talk about your, your grandma. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> and that'll do it on Cuss Corner 36C. Once again, sub to the Cuss Corner only podcast feed. Leave those rating and reviews. Smash the like on the way out. We still have one more of these best ofs to go. Uh, maybe we should get those out earlier in the year. But hey, we're going to have brand new, fresh mini Cuss Corners every week of the football season. So it's time to dive back in. That was Cuss Corner 36C, Cuss Corner 36D, dropping very soon. But until then, I'm Pat Mayo. See you next time. Experience! Experience!